The procedure begins with a placer inserting the feeding tube into the patient's nose, as can be seen here by the nasal hairs. The tube will then progress down the back of the patient's throat, heading towards the larynx. The patient is swallowing, so we'll see some rapid movement, and will quickly progress down into the esophagus. At around the 30 centimeter mark, we will pause to determine that we are in the correct location. At this point, you can add air utilizing the insufflation device to create space and then visualize the esophagus contract around the tip of the feeding tube. The esophagus is a long, hollow, muscular organ that collapses on itself. This is, of course, opposed to the long, rigid, open structure of the trachea. Once you're confident you have entered into the esophagus, continue to progress down towards the base of the esophagus or the lower esophageal sphincter. The goal is to progress down to about that 50 centimeter mark where you should be entering the opening of the stomach. The stomach is a cavernous space, which can be signified by a large dark area or presence of large irregular rugal folds. Majority of the time when progressing through the stomach, you'll be in contact with tissue. The tissue of the stomach differs from that of the esophagus. It can be easily visualized by the smooth tissue and the presence of gastric pits, which resemble freckling. In order to visualize the rugal folds of the stomach, you can add air utilizing the insufflation device or pull the feeding tube away from the lining of the stomach. In an attempt to reposition the tube, the placer has retracted the tube back into the esophagus, where we can see the lower esophageal sphincter. You can also visualize the esophagus collapse around the tip of the feeding tube before we progress back down into the stomach. The placer has entered back into the stomach as can be seen by the freckling appearance of the gastric pits. At this point, the placer has progressed the feeding tube to around the 70-75 centimeter mark down at the antrum of the stomach. We will be looking for the tube to progress into the small bowel, which can be easily seen by rapid movement of the feeding tube, almost popping into the small bowel, as can be seen here. We now see a change in the tissue. The tissue of the small bowel is covered with a finger-like projection called villi that will move around the feeding tube in a wave-like fashion. Once you've progressed the tube to the desired depth, you may end the procedure. Prior to initiation of enteral feeding, confirm placement of the feeding tube per facility protocol.